Hello friends, welcome back to my channel Banking Digits. My name is Soikot Maji. Today we are going to discuss about MT700 Swift format in details. Let's discuss what are the meanings of each field in a uh, MT700 message, how to check documents under an LC, or if you are working in an organization where you are preparing documents for presentation under LC, then also you will be benefited from this video. First, let us know what is uh, MT700 message and what are the features. So it is an authenticated suite message which indicates the terms and conditions of a documentary credit or a standby letter of credit transmitted by the sender. So as it states, it is by default authenticated communication and we do not need to further check for any authentication or genuineness. Letter of credit or SBLC can be transmitted through MT700. Next feature is that format of MT700 is standard across all country globally. Next feature is LC issuing bank issues or transmit the LC to beneficiaries bank which is called as advising bank. Here advising bank further advises the LC to beneficiary. Now in MT700 the field length is predefined and standard. So the issuer may face the field length limitations in respect of particular fields. So what will happen in case the limitation exceeds? This we will discuss in this video. Now uh, let's see a sample Swift format here. See, you will generally find MT700 message in a text or Microsoft Word format. Here I have pasted the same format into a PowerPoint presentation. That's why it is looking like this. But don't worry, all fields are same. If I scroll down, then you will see the complete message. Now look at the topmost place here. This date and time mentioned is when LC got transmitted. In the next field, you will find the authentication result. Here it is mentioned correct. You may uh, f uh, also find here as uh, mentioned as ACK, ACK. ACK stands for acknowledged. That means LC got transmitted correctly. If you find here mentioned as NAK, that is called NAC, then that means uh, the LC is not actual, uh, not acknowledged, which is not yet transmitted. Here you will find, uh, refer this field, you will find sender and receiver bank details. Here, ABN Amro Bank has transmitted the LC to fifth, third bank. In 99% cases, issuing bank details will be mentioned under sender, sender field, but sometimes it may not be the same. Receiver bank is the beneficiaries bank or advising bank. Now, refer field 27. Here, sequence number is mentioned as one by one. That means it is complete. It is a complete LC. However, if you find this as written uh, one by two, then that means there is another copy of the message through MT701. You might have a doubt that why uh, MT701 has been issued separately. As I have already explained earlier, field lanes of MT700 message is predefined. So, whenever LC clauses are too big and issuing bank is unable to mention all the clauses in MT700 due to its field restrictions, then issuing bank issues another message which is corresponding to this in the form of MT701. Next field is field 40A. Here form of LC is defined which states irrevocable. 
means this cannot be cancelled or changed without beneficiary consent. UCP 600 no longer permits issuance of revocable LC. So you will get, uh, you will generally not find an LC issued in revocable form under UCP 600. You can also find that uh, in some LCs under 40A field, it is mentioned as irrevocable transferable, which means it is a transferable LC and article 38 will be applied to this LC. Refer to next field, which is field 20. It mentions uh, the documentary credit or letter of credit number. Next field is 31C. It refers to the issue date of an LC. This date and the date of transmission mentioned on the top can be different sometimes. When LC is effective from a back date or it is effective in a future date, that time this date can differ. So don't get confused. Always, rem uh, always consider field 31C as the date of issuance of LC. Now field 40E refers to the applicable rules. Generally it is mentioned as UCP 600 or UCP uh, latest version or EUCP or UCP URR latest version. So applicable rules of the respective guidelines will apply to this LC accordingly. Next field is 31D. It states date and place of expiry. After this date, this LC will not be valid and Place of expiry means beneficiary need to present the document under LC to this place. But remember here, presentation need to made within the period of presentation mentioned in the LC. We will discuss this in later uh, of this video. Next field is field 50 refers to the name and address of the applicant. And uh, field 59 which refers to the name and address of the beneficiary. Now field 32B refers to the amount and currency of the LC. Here it, it is mentioned as uh, USD 10,000. So document under this LC to be presented in the USD currency only and issuing bank will honor up to uh, USD 10,000 provided the documents are complied. Next field is 41D. It refers to LC is available with which bank and available by negotiation or acceptance or payment or deferred payment. Here it is mentioned as any bank, which means beneficiary can present the documents to any bank within the period of presentation mentioned in the LC and any bank can honor or negotiate the documents. However, it can also be restricted to some specific bank like in this field after uh, just refer uh, which is mentioned after slash it is mentioned XYZ bank then only XYZ bank can honor or negotiate the document. Next field is 42C. It refers to the tenor of draft or bill of exchange. In this case, tenor of draft should be on site basis. Next field is 42D, which means draft should be drawn on this bank. On the draft or bill of exchange under draw field, the bank name should be, this bank name should be mentioned. Just remember, this name of draw can also be different from issuing bank. Now next field is 43P, which states whether partial shipment is allowed under this LC or not. It means if partial shipment is allowed, then beneficiary can do the shipment in multiple lot. And if it states it is not allowed, then beneficiary need to do the shipment in single lot. 
Next field is 43T, which states whether transshipment is allowed or not. Now, what is transshipment? Transshipment means unloading from one means of convenience to uh, uh, another means of conveyance. You may refer to my explanation given on Article uh, 19 of UCB for better clarification about the uh, transshipment. Because uh, if I uh, describe everything, this video will be too long. Now, next field is 44A, which states place of taking in charge or dispatch from or place of receipt. This field generally means transport documents should evidence that goods have been dispatched from this place. Next field is 44B which states place of final destination or for transportation to or place of delivery, which is quite similar to previous field. We have discussed uh, just now about 44A. Here transport documents should evidence that goods have been dispatched to this place. Next field is 44E is about port of loading here it is mentioned as usa port it means goods can be loaded into vessel from any port of the country in usa if these fields could have mentioned any specific name of the port then transport document should evidence that goods are loaded into vessel from a specific from that specific port only which is mentioned in this field otherwise presentation will be discrepant Next field is 44C, port of discharge, means transport documents should evidence goods uh, have been dis discharged in this port. Just apply similar logic like we discussed in field 44E. Next field is 44C, refers to the latest date of shipment, means the date of shipment evidence in a transport document should be on or before this date means if this date is mentioned then also the uh, document is okay document is complied but the shipment date cannot be after this date now field 45a which refers to the description of goods needs to be mentioned on invoice just remember here invoice does not require this goods description to be mentioned as mirror image however all the wordings of these fields should be available in the invoice which can be in different places but if we read together about all the places we should be able to find that all the words are available which is mentioned in 45a next field is 46a it is documents required field which refers to what are the documents need to be presented under LC and how many original or copies required to be presented. Next field 47A. Here issuing bank can mention any additional condition like any additional specification about the document or type of goods or any specification about the type of packaging or information about the interest rate of discounting or any other confirmation instruction etc next field is 71b refers to the charges who will bear the different types of charges will be written in this field now field 48 refers to the period of presentation here it is mentioned as 28 days it means within 21 days from the date of shipment document need to be presented to the place of expiry which we have already discussed earlier it is uh, already mentioned in the lc which what is the place of expiry however it is very important to note that this period cannot go beyond the expiry date of the LC, this 28 days period. 
in case uh, this 28 days from shipment date is going beyond the expiry date then lc expiry should be considered as period of presentation next field 49 it refers to the confirmation instruction here it is written as without which means this is not a confirmed lc it can also be state stated as confirm or may add which is written here in this case confirming bank details uh, should be mentioned confirming bank details uh, may be mentioned in uh, the field uh, under 47a next field is 53a which means beneficiary bank or presenting bank need to claim payment from this bank by sending mt 742 suite to this bank mt7 what is mt 742 it is a reimbursement claim suite remember this is an optional field in case this field is not available then payment will be directly remitted by the issuing bank to presenting bank no need no need of sending any separate claim suite next field is 78 which refers to the payment instruction given by issuing bank to presenting bank how presenting bank will get the payment whether issuing bank will directly remit the funds or a presenting bank need to claim from reimbursing bank now we have reached to the end of the mt700 message hope you have liked the explanation please mention in uh, please do mention in comment box whether you have liked it or not so that I can improve in uh, next explanation videos. Also request you to subscribe to my channel if you want to get uh, the notification about similar educational videos in future. Thank you.